I was once a woman of property. You might not believe it now, but I was. It was after the war, down in Georgia, where I previously worked for Rice Plantation. A Mr. Captain Thaddeus Mix. Now, if ever a fine gentleman there was, it was Captain Mix. When the war between the states broke out, I said, Captain Mix, I ain't no Yankee. I'm with you. You can trust on me. But I have to say that war changed him. He came to hate so. And hatred just wasn't in my blood. Seemed old Captain Minx got himself locked in embrace with the devil himself. Hate just seemed to spill out of him so bad. Being a Christian, I was a fright word for him. I never seen nothing tear men apart like that civil war. Make brother hate brother. Like a William Shakespeare tragedy where everybody kills themselves and goes straight down to hell. Well, after Gettysburg, Captain Minx came on back to the plantation. Came back for a bit and drank. I hate to say it. He drank himself silly day in and day out. Till one day in a saloon, he took on some young New Yorker named Johnson, challenged him to a fight. Well, strange as it may seem, they both done drew and shot themselves dead. Both at the same time. It was like two trains colliding on the same track. It was in the papers. After that, Mrs. Minx went crazy. She started talking to herself in some language I never did recognize. Except it wasn't English, nor human from what I could tell. Yeah, a Yankee and a Confederate, both shot dead. Both hateful and full of pride as they was. So I wound up with the property. Deeded to me by Mrs. Minx, with a little nudge on my part and an order from General Sherman to back me up. We put her on up in the cellar with a nurse where she just kept on rocking and talking that same language. After that, I was married. My husband had the right to vote even as a colored man. He even voted in a Negro congressman. Now, I couldn't vote being a woman and a colored woman to boot, but I was a woman of property, deeded to me by Mrs. Minx in a moment of clear mind and charity. We kept that plantation, at least a good part of it, running for another five years. Until white folks done changed all the laws. We got up to eat the Yankees. And they killed my husband. And my two sons. And they drove me up north to Chicago to my cousin Minx. How angry and full of grief was I. Can you imagine a hurt? A pain that sees you like a hot iron in hell that lasts for weeks. It burns you to the core so you know you change forever. That's what 300 years of servitude. And not a clan. And those that remain quiet in their midst. That's what they done to me. To us. To my people. Well, I have to.
that was gone. They took Miss Minx on out the cellar. They put her on the back porch in a rocker. But she just kept on speaking that same language. Only now with more confidence. I heard she died in that rock at age 102. I tried for so many years to heal the hurt. And it was only through my praying I got through it. I came to forgive. So I don't hate those men or the Klan or the white politicians that turned us into a new kind of slave. I tried to stay back from that abyss, being a Christian. My past always says, an eye for an eye will make us all blind and toothless. Seems so many are trapped in the Old Testament ways. So many so that one day they gonna bring the world down around us all. Yeah. The poisons of the world are always the same. Hate, greed, pride, envy. I can only pray that the love of Jesus will have the final say in the world, that, that the meek will inherit their due. For me, freedom's gonna have to do. And love. I decided a long time ago that freedom and love are one and the same. No man, no woman, Negro or white has any hope without it. And in the end, it's our love or hate that makes us what we is. That's what I'm always trying to tell these ladies at my church, feisty as they is about the female vote. So that about sums up my politics. I tell them, don't hate. Just love, children. Love. Love.